Presonus has two stage boxes currently available in the Studio Live Series 3 family, the NSB 8.8 and the 16.8. Each includes dual network ports configured as pass-throughs and power supplied on a locking cable with a nice solid power switch that feels secure when latched on. There is no primary secondary uh, support here as the consoles only have a single network audio port. Uh, that spec may be important for some folks looking to use this system for live sound, but other consoles in this price range like the Behringer X32 also don't have native uh, redundancy support and they're very popular. At the time of shooting this video, a pre-Sonus uh, Studio Live 16 like this one and an NSB 16.8 stage box package would run you around $2,900, including the console at $2,000 and about $900 for the 16.8 stage box and the $99 rack ears. Obviously, you don't have to buy that rack kit. With the AVB network side of the ecosystem handling 56 audio streams in total for inputs and outputs, the Series 3 mixing surfaces are capable of processing 30 six inputs and 18 outputs. One exception to that is the 16R rack mount mixer, which can handle 32 inputs and 16 output uh, channels. With the Studio Live 16 and a single 16 8 uh, NSB stage box, we have 32 mic inputs total and 16 physical outputs between our local and remote I.O. Uh, we could add the NSB 8.8, .8, which is what I have connected up right now here, and that would give you 24 remote inputs and 16 remote outputs. And and you can choose between the remote and local channels as required. Now the output AVB streams must be assigned in banks of eight and they can only be assigned to a single console at a time, while the inputs can be assigned to feed multiple consoles as you need for a monitor, front of house, or more complex recording type setups. Uh, identifying boxes in those bigger setups is as simple as going to the audio routing stage box and then I can hit this locate and you might be able to see, let's see in the background, you. So you can see with that locate button on, uh, now the light on the stage box over there is flashing and that lets me know that I've identified the correct stage box when I'm doing patching. That's a really handy feature. Now patching is really simple with these. You go to the home button, you go to audio routing and stage box setup, you select the stage box you want to route and you've got all your options right there. The Series 3 mixers and these NSB units are also IEEE 1722.1 AVB compliant. Now, unlike the previous generations of AVB gear from PreSonus, these ones can be used with similarly compliant equipment from other manufacturers. In those cases, control over the stage box preamps, the phantom power and things like that are done with the universal control software. The genuine Amphenol inputs and outputs are really great and they feature convenient quarter inch uh, tempering sleeve and XLR combo jacks on all of the inputs on both model stage boxes. These are really handy for real life situations where those high impedance uh, inputs especially tend to show up kind of at the last minute and without a whole lot of warning. Very handy for patching something like a keyboard player or a laptop at the last minute that's got a lot of inputs. And uh, on the top they've also included this soft mute all switch and that is really a uh, nice feature just by holding that down, it'll disable that. So you don't have to worry about somebody dropping something and muting your entire stage box. Now I'm gonna get a lot of questions, uh, the usual questions about, hey man, how do the mic pre's sound? And I'm happy to report that these boxes include the same input circuitry as the Studio Live Series 3 mixers. Now overall, I've been really impressed with how good this console and these stage boxes sound. Preson is using the 33079 uh, four channel op amp here in this design. And we've got four of them right there giving us our 16 inch input channels, and that's a low noise four channel op amp there from ST Microelectronics. And the rest of the design is very nicely done. It's well put together. Uh, parts are modular, so if your power supply, for instance, was to go bad, that's an off the shelf part as well. That is from, uh, let's see who, Mean Well Enterprises there in, uh, in Taipei City, Taiwan. You know, for some reason, something was to go wrong with an individual board or an individual part here. This is all pretty uh, easy to source uh, parts at least as far as the components, anything you'd want to repair on your own go. Uh, capacitors, everything's very accessible, easy to get to. Then you've got all of your uh, microphone inputs, outputs, phantom power, and everything on this board here. So some degree of repairability, one would assume here, uh, if something was to go wrong down the line, hopefully you'd be able to send it in, they'd be able to get in here, uh, access what they need to, and make repairs. So that's always nice to see. And in a total, all in all, I think this took me maybe, you know, a little under 
under 10 minutes uh, the first time without any instructions or service manuals to take apart. So if you were troubleshooting something out of warranty down the line, certainly uh, something you can get into. You can get uh, a soldering iron around most of these parts. And that's all I really want to see here as far as build quality. Is it built well? And I think it is. And is it serviceable? Is it serviceable? You know, not necessarily by everybody that buys one, but can somebody reasonably get in here uh, that knows what they're doing and affect or repair? And I would say absolutely yes in this case. This is uh, brilliantly well put together to be serviced either in the field or on the workbench. Uh, should that come up in the future. Preamp circuitry is respectably quiet. I'm not applying excessive gain to these microphones uh, when I've been using them in the past few weeks. And I know some folks mentioned that as a concern with previous experiences with PreSonus equipment, that they had to, they felt like maybe they were applying a lot of gain at the input uh, to get the microphone up to the level that they wanted. And with these stage boxes and the Studio Live digital mixers I've been looking at, I have not experienced that whatsoever. With the little AR8 analog uh, uh, mixer, I did have to wind that mic pre open pretty wide uh, for dialogue. And if you were doing something like a voiceover with an RE20 or an SM7, you could definitely run into problems there where you're really at the end of the range winding that all the way open just to get a usable level. Not the case with the Studio Live 16 and these stage boxes, in my experience, uh, absolutely right in the ballpark of where I want to be uh, input trim wise. I don't feel like I'm gassing it just to get a good signal. And both of these boxes have connected and configured just as expected each time I've used them. And I've got no doubt that they're built well enough to withstand regular use. They're really nicely put together. Uh, when considering a system, I believe that the workflow, the overall feature set, like build quality and do the features fit the job that you're doing with them, uh, it's far more relevant than scrutinizing things like a mic pre. So weigh the audio quality against the feature set and decide accordingly what fits your needs and budget for a given project. Uh, I think if you give them Series 3 mixers a test drive, at, at very least you'll appreciate all the work that's gone into the audio quality and the overall feature set. There's so much packed into these, but we're going to cover a lot more of that in later videos about the Studio Live 16 mixer, the ear mix, the switch. Uh, we've got a whole bunch more to cover yet, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is just supposed to be about the stage boxes. <laughs> My only real complaint so far about these stage boxes is honestly the size of the handles. If you look at the NSB-8 uh, sitting on the shelf right there and I hold up the frame of this 16, it's a considerable amount of, of handle to put onto each side of one of these. And I would just as soon have them not include those. One handle would have been plenty. I'd love to see maybe like a rubber bumper or a grip or something or something that could be integrated to just slide on and cover the inputs and outputs during transport. That would be far more valuable than those handles. And honestly, if you really want to make some friends, make some people happy, uh, drop the handles and include that rack mount kit. $99 is a little steep for a pair of rack ears, in my opinion. Just throw in the rack kit. People would love to rack these way more than they're going to use those handles. Just, you know, my opinion. Again, maybe I'm wrong. So overall, these uh, stage boxes are really well put together. They've got some nice features like the mute all button. Uh, the combo jacks are excellent. The quality is fantastic throughout. They're pretty darn serviceable. It looks like you could get in and replace any one part of this. So there's a lot of value, I think, packed into these. And I hope that was a reasonable first look, at least at this system. Uh, it's very hard to cover every single feature on a system this big in one video. So I hope this was... Uh, useful for anybody considering the stage boxes. Uh, visit dcsoundup.com or jump down to the description below for more info, links about these, pricing on everything we talked about here. Uh, thanks so much for watching. This video was made possible by viewers like you. Thank you so much for your support.